Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and our next Escape from Tarkov video. This one is going to be about the VSS and Asval, the two 9x39 weapons in Escape from Tarkov. Now, lately BSG has made quite a few changes to these, and it looks like those have kind of tailed off now. They've kind of got them fine-tuned where they want them. So I'm going to do a video, kind of walk you through the attachments, how to build them, the pros, the cons, and give you some tips on how to be more successful with them. So first up, let's talk about the VSS and how you get it. It's available on the flea market so you can just straight buy it off the flea market and quite a few of them show up because player scavs get them and they sell them on here and it's not too bad and if you're going to be using a vss as a dmr the lower durability is probably not too big of a deal but if you're going to be using it more like an smg or assault rifle or you know just a full auto uh boxing weapon if you will the durability does matter so you might want to stay away from these now, if you want to get one that's 100%, uh, and you can buy them a flea that way, but the only other way is to buy them from proper outside of getting them from like scav, uh, scav uh, cases and, you know, airdrops and things like that. Now, the first one is available on loyalty level three proper. Uh, it's a ratchet and a cyclone. Just keep in mind that it does not come with a dust cover. So you're going to have to buy one of those and you're going to want to simply because... Uh, they do have some benefits and you can use the ASVAL or the VSS. It doesn't matter. They're both the same plus two ergo and then negative three on the durability burn. Problem is, is neither of these dust covers are available until loyalty level uh, four proper. So keep that in mind if you're doing that barter on loyalty level three, you know, maybe you use an old one off of one that you've burned up or something along like, like that. The one on loyalty level four proper comes with the dust cover. So you don't have to worry about it. It's a little bit more expensive um battery sgc and then the long flat screwdriver but pretty close and this is about what you're going to spend for a full 101 anyways uh depending on the time of day so you're 160 170 now which is expensive but i've seen them down like 130 120 000, which is pretty close to the barters for 100 out of 100. now the asval uh also available on the flea market uh you can straight buy it it's a little bit cheaper than the vss and we'll get into some reasons for that after a little bit uh, but you can and but you can also buy it straight from proper uh, for 144,000. And there's no funny business with it. Uh, you don't have to worry about a dust cover or anything. And it even comes with a magazine. I'll go ahead and show you here on proper where it is right there. Loyalty level 444, 499. As of, at least at least of making this video. So those are your two your two primary weapons that we're going to be talking about. And for all intents and purposes, as we get through this, they are almost identical. There's a couple of small differences we'll talk about, but all of these parts are interchangeable unless I specifically say otherwise. So they can go on both of them. And their stats aren't all that different. Uh, they do serve a little bit different. At least the stats you can see aren't that different. And they do serve a little bit per different purposes IRL, but that doesn't matter in the game. Most importantly, the thing you have to remember is that the VSS has a little bit better hidden stats. These are stats that we don't see. Um, BSG changes from time to time. We don't necessarily know about. And these hidden stats actually make the VSS feel a little bit better in shooting full auto especially, but even semi-auto. And it has a little bit better accuracy, though not enough to really matter. Now you might say the VSS has lower recoil or, um, you know, better ergo. It, it doesn't have better ergo, but the, the ASVAL has better ergo. And that's gonna change here with some of the parts we talk about, the one part that is different between the two. And we'll get into those in a second. But let's, let's hammer through some of the basic stuff real quick, just to get it out of the way. Uh, one thing you can do is you got two choices on charging handles. So these just go on the left side of the gun. Um, I can't really, I'll, it's right here, this little piece. So you see, I put it on there, it just clicks on. Um, and that one's plus one, you get it off a of skier. This one's plus three, it's also on skier, but I think it's like skier three or skier four, it's higher level. Uh, but it's just a little bit of ergo, it's not a huge deal. Next up, you have your magazines. So you have three choices. You have 10, 20, and 30 rounders. Now, the 10 rounders are pretty straightforward. They're really cheap. You buy them off of um, proper if you need to, but you can get them off the flea. 20 rounders can be a little bit more expensive. Again, more readily available. You do have a barter uh, available to you a little bit earlier on at proper loyalty level two with one of these tech manuals. So once you get the flea market, that's not too bad because I think these things are usually like uh the tech manuals are usually like 15k if that even we'll go look here real quick so they're pushing 20k so if you can't necessarily get the mag because you can't buy it from them yet which you can buy it from them at loyalty level three proper and at loyalty level three is when you get the 30 round mag barter which is four pliers which isn't too bad this is usually about the same cost as buying it outright anyways so it's it's not like you're spending a lot of money for the barter but you get it because you can't actually buy the mag until loyalty level four proper and other than that, they're usually 40, 50. Sometimes they push 60,000 rubles trying to buy these 30 rounders. It depends on 
if somebody does a video or something and a lot of people are buying the mags up for a time being because it's popular. Now, as far as stats, um, not hugely different. You know, you've got negative five ergo on the 30 rounder, negative two on the 20 rounder, and then you actually have plus five on the 10 rounder. And there's some guys that actually like running these 10 rounders when they use them as DMRs for that little extra bit of ergo. Uh, it also makes them easier to hand. It, makes, it just makes them easier to handle uh, and the weight a little bit less as far as um, the weight of the gun, but then where your mags sit in your rigs, you can, you have more choices for slots in your rigs than if you're trying to run the 20 or 30 rounders. Now for dovetail sights, uh, mounts attachments, there's a bunch of them. These are, these are the full list here. You've got the Cobras, the, the 043, 02, the VMOS P-LOD. Then you got the two B-13s. Um, this, this is kind of a newer one. It's a sag bit, low profile dovetail. And what this allows you to do is you can put micro red dots on it. And it, it's the same as a lot of the other AKs, right? It has the same attachment system. But the two primary ones that I use, I almost always use the SVD low once I get it unlocked. It's worth a bunch of money. It's kind of expensive if you can't buy it. So if you can't buy it, it's probably not worth spending the 60,000 on. But once you get to, I believe, loyalty level three mechanic, I'll go look here real quick just to make sure and show you guys. Yeah, right here, loyalty level three mechanic and you can buy it. Um, that's the one I use, but this XD, uh, the SVD XD RGL mount is also one of, is a good alternate. And the reason I say that is because how low they sit. Now, if you can see, it tugs right on top of the, the dust cover, whereas something like a B13, you can see how it sits much higher up. Uh, it, it takes up more screen space when you're, when you're non ADS and you're sitting around. So it makes it a little bit more unwieldy to use it when you have some of these other mounts, which is why I don't usually use them. If you have to, you have to. Uh, but the SVD low serves all the purposes you can need, um, which is primarily why I use it. So I'm going to move these out of the way, get them out of here. Let's pull this site off because there's a couple other things I want to show you with it. So your SVD low, your XD RGL, those are your two primary sites. Both of them, both of them are a mechanic. This one's on loyalty level two mechanic. Now, when it comes to what these sites are used for, if you're just using a EOTech or a micro red dot, all of them work, right? They all go on everything except obviously this one, but uh, if you want to use, like, let's say you're using a hammer or a Bravo scope, or maybe even a FLIR, right? Or one of these, some people like using ACOGs I do, or even the night scope, which I use sometimes. Those have a little bit more limitations. These ones obviously don't because they're the size of the mount that they have. They're, they're able to go on all of these scopes. But if you go to a one to six, or uh, even a, you know, the higher scope, the 30 millimeter mounts or the 34 millimeters, all you can use are your B13s, your SVD low and your, R, um, your RGLs, as you can see here by which ones are turning green. So if you do want to put a 6X, this is again why I like the SVD low, because it works with everything. Um, you don't have to worry about, oh, I might not be able to put this site on there or that site. So it just makes it easy. And the same thing with the, the XD RGL. So that's the sites, just so you guys are aware, you what you can run and what you can't. Uh, they have a bunch of like fixed sites that are actual sites that attach. You got everything, all your three different PSOs that'll go on. Uh, you've got this night scope, which is kind of goofy if you want to use it, I guess. But, um, I mean, you can see it's so, it, it's not great. It, I, I've tried to use it. I've tried to make it work well. It's just not, um, a lot of people end up running the Cobra or even the, uh, OPK, uh, OKP7, which are decent sites. They're cheap. They bolt right on. Uh, if you're using it earlier in a wipe or you don't have anything else accessible, they work just fine. Uh, they're just not as great as others. A cheap option to a, a scope is also uh, the uh, 1P59 mount will go on there with a 1P59 optic. And it's not a great optic, but it's not a bad one. It still functions. It's cheap. You're probably going to get it back in insurance, things like that. So keep that in mind. And that's all these other scopes down here, stuff you're probably not ever going to use because they're not very good. Uh, maybe if you're doing a hardcore counter, it's early wipe, but you know, a Cobra is always viable and I would use the Cobra over most anything else down here just because of how they function, especially something like this terrible site. I think I've got a short of me using this once and it's, it's just brutal to use. Uh, so keep that in mind with your sights if you're ever experimenting. Now, as far as attaching lasers and uh, grips to these, you only have a couple options. Outside of the Cobra mount, this Axion Cobra will actually allow you to put lasers on. Let me grab one here and show you it. It attaches right on the side, right here on the side of that mount. Uh, but th that's not your best option. You've got so many better options. The rest of them are these B3 uh, adapters. Uh, they're Zenit B3 ring mounts. They, this one has two mounts. This one has one. And this one is kind of a lot more, it's a uh, Taz 6P29M 
it's got a lot more options too. We'll get to in a second. We'll just go too far. All right, now the B3, uh, the, the this one that has two attachments points is kind of unique uh, because it's it's one for a laser on the bottom and then another for a micro red dot that you could actually put on the top front of the weapon. But I'm going to show you here real quick. That's not super, super effective. Uh, if you go in and look at it, you can see how hard it is to, to see down that. And there's a lot of weapon sway when you go left and right, which is a product when sights are really far forward like that. So it's kind of hard to control the sight, see what's going on, the recoil, the camera shake, all of that stuff is really bad. So I don't recommend that uh, for, for using as a sight, but it's there. If, if for some reason you want to use it, it is there. Now, the much preferred, the usually most used one is this uh, 6P uh 29 taws and as you can see they're pretty expensive now not only is this on jaeger loyalty level three which can be a little bit higher harder to get to not a lot of folks always get to jaeger loyalty level three to buy it uh it's locked behind gunsmith part 15. so i'll pull that up here and show you guys real quick the gunsmith part 15 it unlocks right here so this is the asval you have to do this um this task to get that part unlocked or spend a small fortune on it as you can see but this one is the most important for it because this is the only way that you can actually attack attach four grips to it uh that's to get you that extra recoil reduction and extra ergo it has also has two additional spots to put lasers flashlights you know all those kind of objects like you might want like that on the the left or right side of it to uh, further further um make your gun a little bit better to shoot now, one thing I want to bring up, I have a whole video talking about foregrips if you want to go check that out if you have questions, but I want to point out how um, not necessarily important it is to go with like a full RK2, right? So we'll look here at what the recoil stats do. So an RK2 on this lowers your recoil. We're at 37, 138, right? If you go with a much cheaper and easier to get, like let's say RVG Black, as you can see, not only does it give you 15 more ergo, which is really important, um, in my opinion on these guns, more important than that two recoil you're gonna lose. So you go to 38 recoil, and that's the difference between that. And if you go with uh, the Canted, it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. You get a little bit better recoil, a little bit ergo, um, but even, even things like the SE5s or other stuff like that are gonna serve just fine, and they're gonna give you that extra ergo and not trade up that much recoil reduction. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about real quick is specifically to the ASVAL. The VSS, that's it. Those are all the parts you can put on there, but the ASVAL has a little bit of an extra trick and you can run it just like this, but the other way is uh, to pull off the stock and the pistol grip. Now, when you do this, do not do it folded. Do not take this apart folded. Make sure it is unfolded when you take it apart or it will cause you issues. So we'll take off the stock and the pistol grip and you get this uh, Asval Rotor 43 pistol grip buffer tube. Now, these are expensive and you can't just buy them from vendors. But what you can do is barter for a milk. So keep that in mind, it's an extra step, but it will save you quite a bit of money. I believe it's on Mechanic 2. Yep, right here on Mechanic 2. Um, you, this is available, it's cheap. You can do three per reset. Uh, there's no reason to be spending 50 or 60,000 on one of these when you can do that, unless you have unlimited funds. But that gives you a buffer tube, M4 style buffer tube on the back, and you can do all sorts of things. Me, I prefer just the standard MOE stock uh, with a rubber butt pad because that gives you the best balance of ergo and recoil. But we'll go into the preset here and I'll kind of show you some of the other options you have. Um, you don't even really get all that much if you go to like, let's say you go to a PRS Gen 3, it, uh, it gives you one er one recoil, but it costs you a ton of ergo. So you're only 50 ergo here. Uh, let's put the MOE and the rep have gone. Now you're 57. Now, even if you go, if you don't have these unlocked because they're, they're expensive or they're higher level, you can go with stuff like the E-Mod. Uh, it's a little bit higher recoil, but same on the ergo. Uh, there's just lots of options. So just keep that in mind uh, that you don't have to go with the meta part. You can save some money sometimes by going with even a CTR, which those are cheap. I think I want to say those things are probably very cheap on the flea market. If uh, you don't have one, yeah, I mean, that's not too expensive. So keep that in mind for some of the other stuff that's out there. You have options uh, for that once you do that. But even with all of this on there, um, we'll keep this in relative comparison. You can see that it's not all that much better than the VSS on stats. Right now, it's the same recoil. If we put on uh, four grips, you can get a little bit better stats, but there isn't a huge difference between the VSS and the ASVAL, uh, even with the, the R43 buffer tube attachment.
So for me, I prefer to use the VSS. One, because the barter is a little bit cheaper and two, it just feels better when you shoot it. All right, now the last thing we're gonna talk about is arguably probably one of the most important things for you to know about the 9x39 weapons in it. That's its bullets, the 9x39 bullets. What they mean, what they do, what they're capable of. Does it matter going from one round to the other, all of that? So you have five rounds. You have the SP5, SPP, SP6, PAB9, and BP. These are ordered from lowest penetration to highest penetration. Now I'll pull up real quick the wiki. I like using these. Uh, we'll hopefully have the editor be able to blow this up a little bit and make it bigger so you can actually see it. But the SP5 has 28 pen, SPP has 40 pen, uh, SP6 is 46, PAB9 is 48, and BP is 55. One thing that I want to point out is a lot of people with the SP6 to PAB9 change, it's 46 to 48. Some people might not think that matters. It does. It's not a huge difference, but it does come into impact with longer shots, shooting at further distances and the higher tier armors, especially class five and six. It does matter. It can be the it can be the difference between one, sometimes two bullets and what it takes to actually kill somebody, which you might not think that's a lot. But when you're full auto spraying and not every shot's landing, that one to two shots can be the difference between one mag taking a guy down or maybe two people down and you not killing anybody and dying. So just keep that in mind, the difference between SP6 and uh, PAB9. Uh, the same applies for the difference between SP5 and SPP. SP5 only has 28 pen. You are going to have to shoot almost an entire mag at somebody wearing class uh, higher class ammo to kill them, assuming you're not getting a lot of flesh shots and doing a lot of damage there. Whereas SPP is half a mag, not even that, sometimes like four or five rounds, and you're going to be able to kill a player with SPP. And SPP is much more available than a lot of the other rounds out there. And it's still functioning, especially when you look like SP6 and its cost, uh, the crafting to PAB9 and then BP being a high-end barter. Now for SP5, using the wiki here, it's available at proper loyalty level two. Um, it's used in the SPP craft, which we'll talk about in a second. SPP is available at, you can buy it um, from proper loyalty level four after finishing test drive part one, but you can also barter it on loyalty level three proper. It's eight packs for two tapes, which is pretty expensive. You know, you're talking like what, so tapes are usually about, let's say they're 10K around, getting out the handy calculator. Uh, so you're you're right around 2,500 around, maybe 2,000 around if you're getting your tape a little bit cheaper. And that barter actually, I think has like a limit of 50 or something. So you can do a ton of them. Um, yeah, you can do a 50. So you're getting yourself, what's that? Eight times five, uh, uh, 40, you're getting 400. You can get 400 rounds off this barter. It'd be expensive, but you can do it at loyalty level three proper. In conjunction with that, you can also craft this on the loyalty level three workbench. It takes 200 rounds of SP5. It makes 200 rounds of SPP. So that is a worthwhile craft to do. If, if you're lower level, if all you have is your work, workbench level three and you can't do it, this craft here um allows you to get it's worth the upgrade if this is all you have is sp5 and you can't get sp6 and bp this is worth the effort in fact i would argue in some ways you should be using more spp than sp6 and we'll get into that in a sec but that uh it, i think it's an underutilized round and it's better than most people think it is after that you have sp6 which is available at loyalty level three proper no no hang-ups there you can also craft it on the loyalty on the loyalty on the level two workbench pretty expensive uh, but it is craftable, so keep that in mind um, that there's another avenue there. If you can't buy it, you can craft SP6, and you can actually craft it before SPP, so it is there. But SP6 has been nerfed a little bit in the, it recently. Uh, more, Most importantly, it, it, it really heats up your weapon fast, so it's pretty much on par with BP with how fast it heats up your weapon, which is the biggest struggle you're going to have with the ASVAL or the VSS is it's going to heat up and cause jams. If you, It doesn't matter what ammo you shoot. If you dump a 30 round mag and then reload and dump another 30 round mag you're not even going to get through the second mag you are going to jam almost a hundred i have not had it not happen since the most recent changes and it's a product of how they want to balance it i guess uh so if you're full dumping mags out of the vss you're going to be jamming so just keep that in mind um it's just that sp6 is worse than say sp5 or even spp is actually the the least heating round it's only 45 percent versus 53 on sp5 or uh PAB9 is actually 56 versus the 61 on these. So after that, uh, one thing to point out real quick though, SP6 is really expensive. It's almost 2,200 bucks around. You can only get 120 per reset. It does sell out sometimes. Some some days it doesn't, some days it does. It just kind of depends on if people are running it or not. Uh, but 
it has it, it's really powerful so, and it's why it's 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 where it's at because at 46 penetration you have a better i think you, you're above 50 percent if it's not it's really close to a 50 percent chance of punching through even class five with that round so you're talking something i mean you're talking around that's better than m80 uh technically better than a lot of the other rounds out there uh that you can't even buy so that's just where sp6 is at pab9 uh, they recently changed it. They took away the BP craft and made it PAB9, so you can't craft BP anymore, but this is what you can craft. Pretty similar. Uh, it does require SP6. That is a downside, so you either have to be able to buy it or craft it yourself. Uh, take that 200, it turns it into PAB9, and a lot of people are going to say it's not worth it. You know, why even waste the money for that extra, extra little bit? I think it is. If you can't afford to do it, that's fine. I'm not saying that you should under all circumstances, upgrade your SP6 to uh, PAB9, but it is worth it. That 46 to 48 pen, it might sound like it's all, it's only two, but where that comes into play is at 48, you're over a 60% chance of penetrating class five, like just going through on your first shot. Whereas 46, you're under 50%. It depends on the class five, but in general circumstances, you have almost a 20 point, a 20% 20 chance higher of getting through class five with PAB9 than you do SP6, which is why it's important because that right there is your one or two bullet difference in killing somebody. And when arms are getting in the way and people are moving around and you're spraying, or you need, you know, you need to kill two players with one 30 round mag with a gun that fires really fast, that's where this is really important. So just food, food for thought. I'm, I wouldn't argue with anybody and tell them never to always craft PAB9 or that they're wrong if they prefer SP6. It's just a point I want to make with it. And the last round we have is BP. And this thing is the king of rounds. This thing is one of the most powerful rounds in Tarkov. And a lot of people don't, they might not understand that, but it, it has so many wide ranging uses. It's extraordinarily powerful, which is why it only being a barter that's available at loyalty level four after doing the task with Grenadier and it being capped. So you come in here and you want to do this barter with proper, you have to have loyalty level four, obviously, you have to have Grenadier done, and it takes strike cigarettes, and you only do 10, so you can only get 80 per reset, and it's a pain because you got to open up each box, but strike cigarettes, when proper resets, right now they're cheap because it's the middle of the day on a Tuesday when I'm making this video, so stuff's cheap, but you will see strikes push over 30k a piece, and at 30k, that means you are spending three points, uh, three and a half thousand to four thousand rounds or rubles per round on BP, and it's worth it. That's like, it sounds like a lot, but it's worth it. Uh, if you're using it as a sub gun, a submachine gun, or an assault rifle, what I would say is stack the top of your mag with BP, don't fill it full, put the top 10 rounds as BP, and maybe the, the next five is SP6 or SPP, something along those lines, because one round of, of BP hitting somebody's armor wrecks it. It doesn't matter if it's class six, it doesn't matter if it's class five, it certainly wrecks it, it goes clean through it. Um, but even class six, it does usually enough damage, it'll take that class six to a class five, and a, a class five SP6 uh, and SPP are not gonna have too much of a hard time getting through that. On top of that, this is something that's very, it's unique to guns like the ASVAL. And it has to do with how ballistics work. Let me close a bunch of these tabs real quick here. We don't really need them anymore, just explaining what was going on. This is TarkovBallistics.com. Uh, uh, Buddy Mine Tower helps with it. It's a great way to look at different stats. And if we look at BP, this shows you the trajectory and the energy of the nine by 39 rounds. And they're all like this because every nine by 39 is technically a subsonic round. So how it functions in the game is completely different. So for example, let's go look at a M80 round, right? The, the 762 by 51 M80. You can see how its energy drops off. It flatlines about 500 meters, give or take, and then it levels off and its energy dissipation is much slower. But the uh, nine by 39 round is really flat like this. The, without getting into really complication, this is this is where the bullet goes transonic. It becomes it's no longer supersonic, and different things happen. It bleeds off energy slower, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's how the game represents that. And if, as you can see, when that happens, how fast penetration power slows down and drops off once it transitions there. Every hundred meters, you're losing two two and a half um penetration power for every 100 meters on m80 and then once you get to 500 it's like one maybe a half things like that right well that slower fall off is always the case with 9 by 39. so what this means is that and you know <laughs> other products that i'm at 39 you don't want to be shooting much more than two or 300 meters but the difference between point blank 
uh, with BP and 200 meters is almost nothing. It's two penetration power. It's like three damage. There is no, it's essentially the same round. So you don't have to worry about were, am I going to punch through armor? Am I going to get through a helmet? How much damage am I actually doing? Because you're shooting at somebody at 200 or 300 meters. Whereas with some other rounds, you do have to worry about that. It completely changes the performance of the round. I'm looking at you, 5.56 five, and 5.45. Five, five, uh, notorious for how they get punished by this system. But, uh, and 9 mil. <laughs> but th that's one of the advantages that using this as a DMR and engaging targets at 50 or 100 meters, using BP or even PAB9, because at 100 meters, you still have 47 pen. With BP, you're still over 50. You're still gonna clean punch through most class fives, which means you have the potential to two shot people. One, two punch with somebody who's on a body looting positioned up you take two quick real follow up or one shot and a real quick follow up right center mass in their chest and they're probably going to fall over at the very least the third one's going to get them if the second one doesn't so that's the rounds of of the 9x39 weapon system now for me whenever i'm running this almost always i don't run sp5 hardly at all it's not bad if it's all you have run it uh because it does have good flesh damage but for me, I'm usually running SPP, like 20 rounds of this, and then some SP6, some PAB9, or BP on top. And what I'll do when I go into raid is I bring a stack of, and people are like, what do you bring three rounds in? Well, because I can get all three of these rounds, I can't get uh, a bunch of the same ammo. So what I'll do is I'll bring in, this might be a little bit extreme, but just for example, I'll bring in BP, PAB9, SP6, and then I'll probably keep SPP out, or maybe I don't bring the SP6 and I bring SPP and then maybe a stack of SP5. And then as I'm reloading mags, I top off my mags with BP, use SP5. And then once I'm through all my BP, I switch to PAB9 and I'll start top, ma top loading those mags. And it just depends on how long you survive your fights, what you do. That's gonna be individually catered for how much ammo you will go through in a given raid. If you're shooting DMR, it probably doesn't hurt to only bring BP and SPP because both of these actually, they have their accuracy buffs, right? It's not huge, but it does, it is helpful. Um, and then just use 20 rounders because if you're using this as a DMR, there's not a big reason to bring these big 30 round mags. Um, and there's even argument to bring 10 rounders. Uh, you know, you could tag your 10 rounder and say, you know, this one has BP in it and you're going to save that for PMCs, but you don't want to waste BP on scavs. So you come in here and you tag this one and you put SPP because that's what you're going to shoot at scavs when you see them. And then you put your SPP in there and you put your BP in there. And when you go to reload, which actually let me show you in the hideout, because some of you guys might know about might not know about this little tip as well, but you can actually select your mag that you want to reload by holding the R button. Like that's what I'm doing right now is I'm holding R and use your mouse wheel and you can select between your two tag mags, right? So if I want BP, boom, I've got BP in my 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 ASVAL here now. If I want uh, SPP, there we go, I got that. And maybe, maybe you got your 30 rounder with SP5 in it because that's your oh shit, I got a full auto somebody and you put that SP5 in there and you let her rip. And you can see right there, the gun gets pretty hot pretty quick. That's a full mag dump. I think that was uh, SP6 or SPP and then I don't remember. Uh, so just some ideas, some stuff to make the gun more effective. I think one thing that a lot of people are gonna overlook with this gun is its ability to shoot at further ranges. Now, everybody you see streamer stuff like that, most of them are using this as an SMG. They're up close and fighting and it's entirely capable there, but it's really expensive to do that. It's prone to jams, which is gonna get you in trouble if you can't clear jams quickly. Uh, and I don't think that's where the gun really shines. I think it's ability to engage targets at 50, 100, 150 meters and just do massive amounts of damage regardless of armor is where this gun um, could be used the most by a lot of players. But then it still has that ability that if somebody pushes you, you don't need a backup weapon. This can serve dual purposes. It can You can treat it as a DMR, but if somebody gets up and super and close to you, you can flip on that fun switch and just dump a mag into them. Now, real quick, we'll do one real quick assembly here for it. We'll do the best builds you can possibly do. And these kind of these kind of just apply uh, regardless of um, the model of the gun you're using. But let me I'll just drag these out of here and show you because these are minimum recoil. So for the VSS, if you want to do minimum recoil, it's just you put an RK2 on it. That's all you do. It gets you down to 34 recoil, 129 horizontal. Uh, I didn't put on the, that there, but that's pretty much meta. You can choose different sites. Some people prefer the micro, like kind of the micro red dots. Let me put a, let me get an RMR or something on here. Some people prefer this. I prefer the EOTEX 
just personal preference do what you want to do flashlights lasers all that stuff's per personal preference um for me i don't usually run the rk2 i had it on here for showing it i usually either run the canted or um the the sc5 simply because giving up that little extra recoil for all that ergo is far more important to me i would rather have the 58 ergo and have that faster ads with this uh than that two recoil just doesn't seem like it matters all that much now with the asval obviously it's a little bit more uh complicated because you have that buffer the buffer tube that we talked about in the pistol grip but once you have that on there again you have a tons of choices with stocks for me um and i actually i kind of like to run the, the the gray stock because it just kind of blends in a little bit better with the rest of the the asval but you run whatever you want rubber butt pad again tend to i tend to run the sc5 or the canted just for that higher ergo um, don't forget to put on your your uh, charging handle carrier thingy and that's pretty much it that's they're pretty they're very simple guns to modify um, it's just more in how you use them that's important but that's pretty much it for the video i hope you guys got a lot of value out of this i do enjoy making these i make them a little bit different than most every people i have a ton of knowledge in here we'll make sure we put uh, we put the chapters down there so you guys can get where you want to get in the information uh make sure you like and subscribe you like content like this we'll keep doing more gun builds especially things maybe like the mcx or some of the other kind of weird guns that a lot of people don't use or understand but appreciate you guys watching as always thanks for your support and everything you do i wish you the best of luck in your raids and we'll see you in tarkov